हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू इपिजि पाठशाला प्रोग्राम मै सेल्फ डॉक्टर शुभव्रत दत्त प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशल वर्क आसाम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी सिलचर आसाम एंड नाउ वील डिस्कस द मड्यूल माइक्रो फाइनेंस एंड एस एच जिस अंडर द कोर्स रूरल डेवलपमेंट माइक्रो फाइनेंस इज ऑफ एंड defined as a financial services for poor and low income clients offered by different types of service providers the term is often used more narrowly to refer to loans and other services from providers that identify themselves as a microfinance institutions that means it is a kind of financial services provide to whom those who are the low income groups okay and it has different process how it has been provided and there we are coming to discuss and those managed these are the services are treated as micro finance institutions micro finance was developed as an alternative to provide loans to poor people with the goal of creating financial inclusion and equality and the mohammad yunis the nobel prize winner introduced the concept of microfinance in bangladesh in the form of gramin bank that means there are number of poor people who are incapable and not eligible to get loan from the bank but if these are the peoples are being provided with the support of the financial systems then they can get sustainability and can start earning for themselves with this concept gramin bank was introduced by the nobel prize winner mohammad yunis in bangladesh the another term microcredit so the microcredit or microfinance is the banking of the unbankables to bring credit savings and other essential financial services within the reach of millions of people who are poor to be served by regular banks in most cases because they are unable to offer sufficient collateral in general banks are of people with money not for people without that is the great women has been men has been said that specifically micro credit micro finance is the banking of the unbankables who will get credit savings and other financial services and specifically they are saying the bank is specifically those who can afford who have money they will be bank for them but who does not have money for them bank is not there so micro credit sound business or development instrument for them who are unable to get direct services from the banking system the most of the micro credit institutions and agencies all over the world focuses on women in developing countries women is a spe specific target under the micro credit why we are coming observation and experience shows that women are small credit risk women are a small credit risk repaying their loans and it tend more often to benefit the whole family that means if you provide credit to the to a woman risks are less chances are there that the, that woman will earn something and will repay back and on the other hand it will benefit the family because women have a child women is more responsible towards the family it has been considered in another aspects it is also seen that as a method giving the women more status in a social economy social and economic way and changing the current conservative relationship between the gender and class when women are able to provide income to the household women to be considered here actually as a deprived class because of their dependency economic dependency on the male partners either husband or the brothers or the fathers so if women have the access for the earnings in the entire family the gender relationship and the balance in the family as in the community 
will change. That was also the focus. Women are in most cases responsible for children and in poor conditions it result in physical and social underdevelopment of the children. That means if a woman have, if a mother have access to income, children have a better future too, as different studies suggested. Women have a higher unemployment rate than men in virtually every country and make up the majority of the informal sector of the most economics. It has been said in the developing or in the underdeveloped nation and in the formal or informal sector both where women have a very lower employment rate or the more unemployed rate over there. To increase employment generation or the income scope for the women microcredit as an option. They constitute the bulk of those who need microfinance services. In India, self-help group is emerged as a stool for the microfinance system. Actually, this is the target group required for the microfinance services. And in India, self-help group as a emerged specific tool for the application of the microfinance system. How microfinance have been applied? It is applied through a tool. That tool is the self-help group. Now, let us come to the concept of self-help group. The concept of I concept and the idea behind the self-help group is very recent origin. That means self-help group definitely by the 90s, mid 90s onwards, the concept of self-help group has started to come and in India is also almost the same time. It is not only play a major role in poverty alleviation in rural India, but is instrumental in creating consciousness among a section of persons who are otherwise ignored and neglected. People below poverty line, mostly women, voluntarily join SAG as a member. That means SAG is here not only considered as a poverty alleviation programs under the microfinance, but it is the instrumental for what? creating consciousness among a section of population who are ignored and who are neglected because they are living in a poverty line and specifically already I said women who are the deprived among them. So women is mostly in a vulnerable in a village where anyway the economy is very poor and they are neglected part. So it is playing the both role economic income generation as well as for the creating consciousness for the social awareness. The SHG system is designed to be effective in empowering the rural women who lives below the poverty line. Economic and social empowerment is one of the basic components of the SHG's development. That means self-help group is also looking at objectives that is not only the economic, economic as well as social, both development will be taking place. I will come with the example. Self-help groups are usually an informal groups of 10 to 20 members who have a common perception of a need and importance towards collective action. Specifically 10 to 20, ideally it said not less than 10 and maximum it has been said 20. So generally a self-help group takes place within 10 to 15, 16 members most of the time. <clears throat> and it has been said they should have a common interest and almost in a similar or the familiar background this women should come and form the group so have so that's why they will have their common understandings common requirement and objectives SAG members are formed similar background like from the same community or same class or sometimes within the relatives also SHGs are homogeneous group. Why homogeneous? Because they have certain pre-group or social building characters. Already I said, if in the same community, if we are taking the 12 members, 12 women members and framing a group, these 12 members known to each other personally, their habits, their likes, dislikes, and almost in the similar circumstances, socio-economic circumstances, they are living. These groups promote savings among members, and use pooled resources to meet the emergent needs of their members, including the consumption needs. What this group will do? This group will have a common fund. This common fund, in case of emergent, they can use it. And for the consumption needs also, time to time, this money will be utilized. 
the SHGs are created to enable the members to reap economic benefits of mutual help, solidarity, joint responsibility towards self and sustainable development. That is not only the economic but also mutual help, solidarity and joint responsibility. In many places in India, self-help groups have been assigned for the another program that is midday meal program in the school. Self-help group have been asked, you are the members who look after. Specifically in a village community, children are studied who are known by these are the members. And for these are the children, even their own children are also studying. So if they have been provided the responsibility of the midday meal program, it is expected that it will be very clean, neat, less corrupted program will run. So not only it is a, that's why it has been said, it is a tool for the economic as well as other for social awareness generation also. This is a all women, this women group can sometimes protest for any exploitation or any difficulties that women are facing by the male. They can protest as a unit. So these are the benefits through self-help groups are also getting by the women. SHGs have become a movement in India. Why it is a movement? Because it is considered the most powerful means to strengthen socio-economic development of women through integrated approach. That means one women as a group are neglected or deprived. When they are coming economic as well as not only the economic by simultaneously their social movement are also taking place. They are knowing to each other, interacting each other, automatically a movement is taking place. That means social recognition are also getting into the picture. The SHS are a viable alternative to achieve rural development and to get community participation in all rural development programs. Already I have given one example and to get community participation. For example, if anywhere in the panchayat programs, it requires the people's participation for the discussions. If five SAG members are coming, that means it will be 60 to 70 participation by the women. So that is a viable tool and there is a contribution. And because of this, it has been possible in West Bengal, in Tripura, in Kerala, even in Andhra Pradesh also, all women panchayat members body. There's a 20 members in a panchayat and all are women. Possibilities are there possibilities it has been possible because these are the SAG members are actively taking part into it. SAGs enhance the quality of status of women as participants, decision makers and beneficiaries in a democratic, economic, social and cultural spheres of life. This has been possible. Earlier when there was no reservation for the women in panchayat, almost there was no participation. With the reservation also, we ensured their participation, but actualization was not there. But with the progress of self-help group, it has been possible that women are actively take, making their role and playing their role for the contribution towards the community because SHG women support base are creating a, a backbone for the panchayats in rural areas. SHGs encourage women to take active part in socio-economic progress in our nation. We can uh, give example that in Andhra Pradesh there was one NGO. He has formed, it has formed 20 or 25 self-help groups as a forum. And through this forum, if any women have a domestic violence, face the problem of domestic violence or other issues, this forum has actively played the role to solve it. And in this direction, the example of the NGOs Mayrada is very crucial. They have made it success in this direction. Now come to the objectives of the self-help groups. Self-help groups have a very specific objectives that are to be follows. Basically, the SHGs are economic organization. Basically, it is economic. Income generation is the prime. Small funds are raised for day-to-day -day needs. The saving groups when transformed to earning groups not only increase the productivity of women but credibility also. Actually at first these women ask to develop the habit of saving maybe every day 5 rupees. When these savings continuously 
make them possible to an earning group that is every day or in every month a self-help group have a specific earnings and automatically individual dividend are there that means it is a productivity many organizations are in there with the support of uh, sorry many self-help groups with the support of different NGOs government and the panchayats and actively has become a manufacturing groups doors are wide open to women to understand the gain understand and gain knowledge about banking gram panchas jela parishad law and judiciary etc so different doors are open to the women and these are the areas as a self-help group members getting scope to participate as economical solutions are available the family structure maintained as because the women are getting earnings automatically support system are there in the family SHG is a good way to stop exploitation of consumers if anywhere any production exploiting so SHG as a group can have a prevention or have a awareness to fight against it or to make a contributory role broadening the view in a major game the ascending order of family group village tehsil jela zone state nation world make the vision very global specifically from the self help group to the global arena the chain has been possible if the self help group become the active and a productive one to develop self confidence among the members many villages we have seen women are actually confined into the four walls they are not even feel confident or comfortable enough to come out from the home and to speak with a male person or sometimes in the unknown female persons also self help group has providing them a platform to come and interacting among the members interacting with the training partners interacting with the banks interacting with the panchayats and interacting with the customers to providing them a platform of self confidence to create a common platform is viable for a dialogue and sharing of views women are getting exchange of the views interaction sometimes differentiation among the views and giving a consensus where the group should reach now what are the important functions of sgs what sg generally they do it enable members to become self reliant and self dependent already we explained providing a forum for members for discussing their social and economic problems it is a platform they are discussing about their economic problems even if they are having social problem related to domestic violence related to child education related to any others they are getting platform to share with others enhancing the social status of members by virtue of being in the members as a group sg provides platform for members for exchange of ideas developing and enhancing the decision making capacity of the members different times if they are going to discuss and they decide automatically the decision making capacity are also increasing sg fostered a spirit of mutual help and cooperation among members because the thrust of the self help group is that support to each other and cooperation with each other automatically it is generating a habit of cooperation and mutual help instilling in members a sense of strength and confidence which they need for solving their problems gradually gradually being a group they are getting the strength of confidence providing organization strength to members because it is gradually running as an organization so automatically the strength as organization they are getting promoting literacy and increasing general awareness among the members sometimes it has been seen in the group two or three members are little educated and looking after the all official works specifically banking specifically training and other things and others are participating but gradually gradually they are also learning to maintain all these other things so automatically awareness and literacy level increasing promoting 
numerically and equipping the poor with the basic skills required for understanding monetary transactions. Gradually, gradually they are also learning how the system runs, specifically monetary transaction, consumers and recordings and other issues. Now, indicators of the good SHS. To, for a good SHS, what should be the different indicators? First one is homogeneous membership. As far as possible, the members of an SHG may comprise people from comparably socio-economic background. Similar system, already I said, similar system should be there. Though difficult to define in clear terms, what is the actually indicator of homogeneity of membership? Very difficult to say that what should be the actual homogeneity is there. Maybe same similar background, same uh, socio-economic system, same community. These are the homogeneity. But one thing should be there. There is the absence of conflicting interest among the members. If there are certain similarities are there, but there should not be any conflicting interest. I like this, you like this. This kind of situation should be avoided. No discrimination. Another indicators there should not be any discrimination among members based on caste religion or political affiliations actually the group has been tried to frame as much as the similar system so that these are the discrimination can be avoided and small membership already i say generally ideally it has been said 10 to 20 so the ideal group size between 15 to 20 so that the members are participative in all activities of SHS because if the number is more then absentia will be there so that can be avoided in a similar group members get opportunity to speak openly and freely however the members may not be too small that its financial transaction turn out to be insignificant even if you just argue that why it should be five or six in five of six there should be actually there should be a minimum contribution and the fund should be created and accordingly they will get the loan so if it is 15 to 20, so the contribution will be certain amount that against that the loan amount will be very significant. Regular attendance. Total participation in regular group meetings leads strength to the effectiveness of the SHGs. In India, many SHGs have been failed because of the regular absentia of the members. So instead, regular attendance is required. To achieve this, SHGs should place strong emphasis on regular attendance in the group meetings. Group manufacturing, processing, program, but in the group meetings. If they are not coming, exchange will not be there. So ultimately, if I have certain interest or something to contribute, I will fail to do that and ultimately I will be alienated and group will destroy. Transparency in functioning. It is important that all financial and non-financial transactions are transparent in SIG. This promotes trust, mutual faith, confidence among the members. If transparency can be maintained, so I will have a confidence, okay, that everything is very in a trustworthy way it has going on. Maintenance of books of accounts and also other records like the minutes book, attendance register, etc. are very important. There are certain bylaws are there for the SHS. What should be the bylaws? The SHG may discuss and finalize a set of bylaws indicating rules and regulations for the SHG's functioning and also roles and responsibility of the members. There is no hard and fast rule but the bylaws will be framed by the SHG themselves that what should be the rules and responsibilities of the each members. What should be the functions? What should be the objective? These are the bylaws to be created by the member themselves in the general body meeting. It is better to have a written set of bylaws and that should be written. The self-help promoting institutions and bank may guide the SHGs in these directions. There are certain uh, uh, bodies are there through whom SHG may take help and support to frame their bylaws. Theft, the habit of theft that means small savings is fundamental to the SHG and, and helps the building of a strong common fund. It has been expected that at first there will be a contribution, money will be there. Against this money, bank will provide you the loan and you will start your business function or manufacturing function, whatever it is. For example, if any group are working for the jute based products, okay, raw materials they are purchased and after getting the training, they have started the different finished products, the bags, ornaments, 
up, up uh, making up of jutes and selling of that the their total turnover is more than the loans loan will be repaid back and whatever their earning that would be saves maybe a small amount and with this saving habit will start saving for loans one asset has accumulated sizable amount then the form of savings say for a period of six three to six months the members may be allowed to avail loans against the savings for emergent consumption and supplementary income generating credit means that is more important one SHG group is getting 50,000 as a loan after six months of savings they are eligible to get one lakh rupees as a loan if they are taking 50,000 as a loan say in case of anybody's emergency or the group emergency group can ask for more amount of loan that is possible so only if the saving habits have contribute to a sustainable amount that is the that is called as a sizable amount to get the more amount of the loan so at the end if we summarize the micro credit and micro finance the two term almost in the similar way has been treated as banking con concept for those who are unable to get support or services from the regular banking system who are them specifically the poor and self-help group has emerged as a tool for the application of this microfinance system and for this microfinance and self-help group the target is the women why women is the target because women is considered as a main sorry a, a small risk for the credit purposes secondly women have a children and they are more responsible towards the family life so that family should have a sustainable income third thing is that it will not only help them to income but also to create their awareness and they will be more aware for that toward the socio-economic life it will provide as a platform for them for unity for any kind of protest for any kind of benefit as well as self-help group should have a saving habits for getting the purposefully other purposes loan and it should set its bylaws with the set and should be mutual trust and very transparent way so that the groups have an interest to support to each other thank you for more information and explanation please follow epg text and the references given over there thank you